Alright, sweet. We're good to go. Good luck, have fun. I actually haven't had a chance to even check the brackets recently. So I don't know what round we're up to. But that's right. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I had to restart the stream because my, uh, my VOD saving decided to just crap out on me. So we'll see how we go. Alright, welcome back, everyone. We are going to be having a TVZ now for the BSG tournament brought to us by SC2C.com. And this is going to be different commentary to those of you just joining us to anything else. It's well talking about the little tips and tricks that bronze, silver, and gold players can adapt into their play to help them help them learn for themselves. Like it's that saying, like, you give a man a fish he eats for a day, you teach him how to fish he eats for a lifetime. And what we're trying to do with these tournaments is there is zero, there is zero prize. We're just trying to help them teach. Like, I'm just trying to help teach guys how to analyze their games, look at, and do the little bits and pieces that will help them become better in the long run. So, we are going to have TVZ in these positions. We're going to have Lazy Boys and Terran at the top left. We're going to have Yuki at the top right. So, wow, it's actually quarterfinals. That's gone pretty damn quickly. So, in ZBT, let's sit on the Zerg's point of view at the moment. The Zerg is going to be on the back foot for most of the game, if he doesn't gain a lead somehow. Uh, it'll probably, like the game, the way most things pan out is, Zerg's defending, defends, gets a macro advantage, and wins. Uh, or usually it's Zerg defends, they, they come off even. Zerg defends, they come off even. Zerg defends, they come off even. Same, sh same stuff like that. Right? Now, on the other hand, the Terran is thinking, I need to do enough damage to him constantly, keep the pressure on, that he's not going to be able to drone up. He's not going to be able to get that macro advantage. So there's the two flip sides of the coin. Now, one thing I do suggest to a lot of earlier players, is while they're still learning the game, is to, believe it or not, play random. Because... If you play random and you play ZBT, and you're like, why is this guy constantly attacking me? Uh, as from a point of view, constantly attacking me, constantly dropping things in my main, and you're like, okay, I don't know why. I don't. Keep losing like that, and you go and try it from the Terran's point of view, and you understand why they do that. They do that because the Zerg macro will out kick the crap out of you if you don't put them behind or you don't put pressure on them. Uh, and it's it's like that with all the matchups. Uh, you really want to learn that. Like like I was saying earlier. The biggest thing that I can say to try and learn is not macro. You will see people say macro, 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 macro. Macro doesn't mean anything if you don't know how to deal effectively with what's coming at you. For example, why would you keep making zerglings versus a, a wall of cannons that you're natural? You wouldn't. You'd make roaches. But if you didn't know that and you were just focusing purely on macro and you're thinking, if I just have enough zerglings I can win, you could, maybe, but it's not the most efficient way to do it. Now, we do see coming from Yuki, he's got up for a speedling opening straight into a Baneling Nest. We're probably going to be seeing some one base play coming from him. Alright. As you don't usually put that Baneling Nest down until after you've got your natural. The, the same thing that I'm talking about, Fatal. You're playing all the different races. Same thing. It's the principle behind it. If you don't have many practice partners, which you wo usually won't have early in the game, because you need to learn, like, you need to meet people and stuff first, that's the easiest way to do it, I'd say. So. What have we got here? We do have two racks coming from Lazy Boy into Expand. Fairly standard these days. But it's not really doing... The whole point of this two racks opening is to put pressure on. You've got six marines. Go and do some damage with them, man. You've already forced Yuki, or Yuki has been forced into a, a more defensive style of play. He's got a lot of links. He does not have a good view of the base yet. He's seen the two racks. Hasn't seen the expand. Hasn't seen the extra two barracks. In the, oh, sorry, extra barracks in the factory. Um, and it looks like he's going to go straight for Bane Dust. While... I do approve of these strats being used occasionally. You don't want to be stuck into something that can be predictable. 
if you do something very bizarre and someone plays and loses to it, it's usually very memorable. Whereas if you just played standard and mixed it up a bit, people don't remember you as much. If you start to get the reputation, or like to learn that you do baneling busts a lot, people will begin to expect baneling busts. Like, the perfect example of this is Chef on Lost Temple. For like a week straight, he did nothing but baneling busts, baneling busts, baneling busts, baneling busts. And then, can't remember who it was worth, but it was in one of the FXO Invitationals. He played Lost Temple, put down. Ooh, here comes the Baneling Bust, but he put down a Baneling Nest, but then went straight into the spin. So he's completely mind, mind trick the Terran. Put so many barracks down at the front, being careful of that. And then just completely got the macro advantage. Now that happens in every matchup as well. Now, see, the problem with Baneling Bust is this type of situation happens. Like, you've busted the front, yeah, but you haven't actually done that big of a damage. Uh, a damage. And now he's only just getting it. Didn't hear me over the painting explosion. Uh, I was saying, don't get stuck into a one strat wonder. Yeah, I'll turn it down. I don't actually hear it on my end, so I I don't play with game sounds. So I was saying, you don't want to get stuck into a one strat wonder. Um, I know it can be very effective when you're laddering. But try and think of the ladder as somewhere where you can learn and practice things to be put into practice. Um, for example, if you're watching this stream and trying to get tips and stuff, you obviously want to get better at the game, you obviously want to be playing in tournaments and have a lot more fun while you're doing it, being competitive. And one of the big aspects of that is I am a big supporter of when a new player starts the game do one strat for a week and just learn it but the next week try a different one and the week after that try a different one you don't want to sit there and become these four gate protoss who just go all the way up to master league and then as soon as they hit that level where zergs know how to defend it and scout it they are completely shut down and they're back to square one because they have to completely relearn that matchup <laughs> you get my point, Fatal. God damn it. <laughs> but yeah, I do agree. TBT is quite rather boring to watch. Um, good old GSL times. Awesome for SEA scene. Right in prime time. Uh, like I was saying, yeah. So I do like the fact that Yuki's sending a wing up the ramp every now and then to check things out. Right, so he, need, he sees the tanks. He sees a lot of marines. So what's what's the best response to this kind of stuff? Mutaling, baneling. Now, let's have a look here. He does have muta. He has links. He has banelings. Does he have baneling speed? No, he doesn't. He wants to get that. Another thing you notice is. So many players, and I'm going to single out Backer here because I've seen him in the last three bronze, silver, and golds, and his game sense is fine, his unit control is fine, he just can't spend his money. And if he could spend his money, he'd go straight up to diamond, I have no doubt in that. But, you're looking at this much gas. Now, he's either saved it for muters, to just pump out a heap of muters, or he's done it as a mistake. No offense to anyone here, but if you're in bronze, silver, and gold, I'm more likely to say I see something that might be a mistake, it might be an idea. I'm going to call it a mistake just because it's this level of play. <laughs> it's no offense to yours, but yeah, I'm just a straight up person like that. So we do have tanks, we have marines, we have marauders. We're at 92 supply versus the 78 of Yuki. We're looking at the uh, incomes here. We got 44 to 39. Could probably use a bit more income. We do. I do like the fact that Yuki's taken a third. You, it's nothing wrong with taking this one here. I like this, taking this third here. It's a lot more safe than anything else. Uh, the the hidden expansions that you throw around, they are useful if they're not scouted. 
if they're scattered, they are absolutely a pain in the ass because you've just wasted so many resources. If I can remember, okay, like I played a game on the ladder because I don't play many games, I just like, don't have time, I'm more like analyzing and stuff. But when I actually sit down and try to get my mechanics back on par for the last, few, uh, for the last couple of days, there have been games where I've gone and tried to do a sneaky expansion and it's lost me the game. But then there's been an equal amount of games where I've gone and gone for a sneaky expansion and it's completely saved my arm, saved me, right? And that's what these hidden expansions are worth. We do have the barracks being fucked down at the back here. I don't think Yuki sees it. There we go, he's seen it. That's right. Don't, 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 don't ever do this. Why would you run all those units up the ramp? You're not going to kill anything. You're just going to get sniped by the tanks and looking at the units lost now. Look at that. 40 units lost to 5. Now he's doing a good job with his muters, but unfortunately there are turrets everywhere. But that's what you want to do. You want to force the Terran. So, some people look at muters and go, they must kill SCVs. They must, must kill SCVs. Not... Not what you, the, you mainly use them for, which is scouting, forcing the Terran to stay in his base, trying to force stims, catching any kind of weak stuff that he can. Like, pure example is, once you get enough muters, you can start sniping these these missile turrets, and then get the reactors, things like that. Now, one thing I will give Lazy Boy, he puts his turrets to placements very, very well. Really well done. However, that's also what, what probably exactly what Yuki wants. He wants all these resources being set. Let's have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... So it's like almost a thousand minerals right there. Like a thousand minerals. That's what? Twenty marines or something. I don't know off the top of my head, I'm not good at math, but that's a lot of minerals that you can be using. He could have been using on marines and marauders and tanks, but he can't. Whereas these mutalisks, which are doing the damage and forcing all these, can still be used in an engagement later on. Uh, it's actually Lazy Boy versus Yuki, guys. Lazy Boy is the Terran. But he is going to be moving out now, and he's got a couple of Thors, which is good. Which means that Yuki has to be very careful. Actually, where is his army? 46 to 47. 118. 167. Okay, this game is actually over, because I wasn't paying attention to the army count. We, like, Yuki has all these units, but he's still got 700, 600 in the bank. Whereas, we're looking at, at Lazy Boy. He's got a 1k, 1k. And unfortunately, there are no banelings. No banelings anywhere. So that's pretty much game over right there. Oh no! Okay. Someone needs to teach this boy. Oh, sorry guys. Someone needs to teach this boy how to magic box. So that's game over. But what happens here is turrets defend against the and as the muter count increases, because you should not be losing muters to turrets, right? You need Thors to kill them, because the more they group up, they do splash damage. Now, to counter that, when you're in the middle of the map fighting stuff, is you select all your muters, right? You right click somewhere, they move there, and then they slowly start spreading out, right? And when they're spread out enough, Say for like, let's say for example, your muters are spread out here. There's a Thor here. -ish. Right click on the map down on the mini map, or even just move your camera. Right click over here somewhere, and when they're actually over the Thor, you just hit stop, and they'll stop and attack stuff because that keeps them spread out. Doesn't take more damage, and this game's over. But yeah, that's my point. 